what are the best games to play with your friends? Ever since Luke and I started this channel over six years ago, a big portion of this channel has been dedicated to exploring all types of games and topics surrounding games, but there's something awesome about playing a game with a good friend or getting the gang together. It can lead to a pretty good time, so over the years, we've been compiling the ultimate list of the best games to play with friends. We looked at this back in the day, then we expanded on it years later, and now we're in 2024 and there are more games than ever that can lead to a pretty great time with the boys. So here are the 100 best games to play with friends. Whether you're looking for upcoming co-op games, story-focused co-op games, multiplayer games, or any other type of cooperative experience, we got you covered using the chapters down below. We also went through and labeled all the games that have cross-play enabled, so... There's that. First up, we have Pal World, which is set to release sometime early this year, which essentially when this game trailer first released, people were already hyped about it. It takes aspects of Pokemon and then mixes them with gunplay. Okay, and it's supposed to be a full co-op adventure. Now there are other games that are kind of Pokemon-esque that do have co-op play out there already, but this one definitely looks the most ambitious out of everything that's released so far. Hopefully this one does stick to that early 2024 release window. After many delays, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is actually set to come out, and I was kind of unsure about this game and whether or not it would live up to what fans expect for this type of game, but the fact that it does have co-op play helps a little bit because sometimes these types of games are more fun when you can play them with good company. The new South Park game, South Park Snow Day, will actually have online multiplayer co-op components built into it, which is different from what we've seen in the past, but it is kind of nice. Now you can't play this game solo, but it is cool that a game that's a little more comedic, lighthearted like this will allow you to play it with friends. Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 actually looks pretty fun and it will be co-op up to three players, which sounds like a good time. That's set to release in September, and then Killing Floor 3. Now, Killing Floor 2 was actually a really fun zombie survival type game if you like fast-paced survival, kind of like those high levels of zombies, but maybe a little bit more relaxed. With a new Killing Floor game on the brink of release, it is really exciting because the previous one was supported so well. It only has us optimistic that a new updated game will add more features, more things to do, and they will continue the support long term. And then a more controversial Controversial one and one that we're not 100% positive is in fact releasing this year would be Bungie's new game Marathon, which is a reboot of the older Marathon series from the Mac systems. You actually can go back and play Marathon Durandal co-op through Xbox Live, which is interesting, but they are going to be fully releasing Marathon either this year or next year, and it will be very team-focused looter shooter survival, but we don't have a whole lot of details on it just yet. We probably won't know much more until maybe middle of this year. Okay, with those out of the way, let's talk about some more games that you definitely need to play if you're looking for games to play with friends. There's been a lot of big fantasy RPG games that have released in the last couple of years and so oftentimes this genre doesn't seem to be super supportive of cooperative games so it is really cool when we do see things that can be played together. Elden Ring was a magnificent and challenging game in the Souls-like genre but it does have cooperative play where you can summon in your own friends to join you on boss battles or just help you fight their way through. The only downside about Elden Ring's cooperative experience is that every time a player or dies, you have to like resummon them, and that can kind of be a pain. Fortunately, though, if you are playing on PC, there is seamless co op a very popular mod that just kind of cleans up this entire feature so you can just play through the whole game in like one go without having to constantly rejoin. But if you are limited to consoles and you are wanting to experience Elden Ring in the cooperative sense, it's not the worst mechanic in the world. It's a little tedious, but I definitely wouldn't rule the game out just based on how the online functionality works. Skyrim Together is actually a really cool mod. It lets you play Skyrim together with your friends, and that's really awesome. I think it's really cool when mods like this come together to just allow you to play a game in a completely different way alongside your friends. And while this one unfortunately is only available for PC players, it's still definitely something you should experience at some point in your life. Like Skyrim, Fallout 4 also has a together mod, so if you're looking to play some Fallout with a friend or something like that, you could play the same together mod but for Fallout 4, which is really cool. I think it probably is still a better experience than Fallout 76, even though they did fix up and add a lot of content to Fallout 76. Fallout 4 was just like 
really good, so you might want to play that instead. More recently, Baldur's Gate 3 came out, and this game obviously has been praised universally since its release, and more recently, finally at the end of 2023, made its way onto the Xbox series of consoles. For some reason, I actually am surprised that so many people don't realize that this game does have full four-player cooperative multiplayer. Now, the progression is saved to whoever the host player is, so maybe keep that in mind, but if you're looking for a great narrative story that you can play with your friends and then level up characters along the way, this game might be one to look into. Its gameplay isn't like an action RPG, it is more of like a strategy turn-based role-playing game, so if you're not used to this type of game, it does take a little bit to get used to, but the game is pretty intuitive in how all of the mechanics work, so while it is a different style of game, it is one that you can pick up pretty quickly even if you're unfamiliar to this genre. And while Luke and I haven't gotten too deep in our own playthrough just yet, we are really intrigued with the story and what's going on with these like little worm things or whatever. And this is one that we started when it came out on Xbox and we're continuing to play through it regularly. On the other hand, if Baldur's Gate 3 maybe isn't your style, you could always go and check out the Diablo games. I mean, we have Diablo 2, which got a really cool remaster a couple of years ago. There's Diablo 3, which just has a ton of content. Or if you want to like stay up to date with like the new stuff going on, obviously Diablo 4 came out and that was really popular. I don't know, every once in a while I'm looking for a game that I can just put like a ton of time into like grinding up a character and I think the Diablo games are usually pretty good at fulfilling that role. We were here, hands down, one of my favorite cooperative experiences in any game that I've ever played. Maybe it's because I like puzzles and first person games and this game combines them both and it kind of acts as like this really creative spooky escape room. But essentially each game in the We Were Here series, which is like four main games and now this like smaller game series that they're starting up which looks really interesting, essentially has two players starting off in different rooms of a castle and you have these walkie talkies and you have to communicate to to the other player what you're seeing on your side and together by just using voice chat communications and the objects surrounding you you have to solve various puzzles and it can get really interesting when you're trying to figure out like how to explain something simple to the other person way back in the day when this game series first came out luke and i started playing it we jumped on board for the sequel and to this day is still one of the funnier experiences we had just trying to figure out how we were going to solve these puzzles and get through the castle okay i see a uh um, like an, a picture, like a, like an icon that has like a, a guy with holding up two pans. Not really like, um, damn, I don't know how to It's like a stick it. man with like a Arnold hat. Like, you know, the show. Uh, it's just, okay, just a stick man. Yeah. Give a stick man yeah. with, uh, yeah. with like three legs and, uh, uh three heads. And honestly, it's a series that we've stuck with since then. Every new release, we check it out. And the puzzles have honestly only gotten better over time. Okay, now if you want to try out something a little bit older or more classic, Perfect Dark is a great place to go. It's available as part of Rare Replay on the Xbox, or you could pop off an old Nintendo 64 cartridge if you're really feeling it, though the Xbox version does have online capabilities. But Perfect Dark was an amazing first-person shooter spy game, a lot like the old GoldenEye type game. You play as Joe Joanna Dark in this futuristic cyberpunk-esque world and she's a spy and she's doing stuff and then all of a sudden you think you're playing a spy game and boom there's an alien that you have to save from Area 51 and from there the story just gets real wild and it's fun it's a little bit dated but it's just a really solid shooter that predates something like Halo now I'm bringing this game up on this list because there is a new Perfect Dark game that is in development and it's supposed to be a really big deal apparently a ton of really experienced developers are on board for the project and that's really exciting and hopefully fingers crossed the reboot will have co-op or if you want a somewhat more scuffed experience you could always play Perfect Dark Zero, which was an Xbox 360 launch title and a prequel to Perfect Dark. And uh, it's fun to play with a friend. It's just maybe not as much of a masterpiece as the first Perfect Dark. Now, a while back, we were really optimistic about Perfect Dark because the original games were co-op, except it seems like there's been a lot of problems in the development phases of Perfect Dark nowadays. So uh, we don't really know if this game's going to turn out to be any good. The development hell is scary, but hey, maybe it'll release in the next few years. And this is a co-op game you could look forward to if it actually has co-op in it and multiplayer. Fingers crossed. Since the wait for GTA 6 is still going to be a bit, a lot of people might be a little bit burnt out from GTA Online. The Saints Row games, though, could be a great outlet to still kind of get that fix. The only thing is, 
uh, probably avoid the newer Saints Row game unless you can find out like a super deal. You don't really have to know too much of the story to dive into this, but Saints Row kind of serves as a parody to Grand Theft Auto and it has its own gameplay that's solid and the story is pretty good, but you're really going to appreciate some of the little nods to the competitor franchise that's sprinkled in there. And the story itself is serious at times, but it has so much comedy throughout the whole thing. You're going to have a really good time easily with this. Honestly, the older Saints Row games, especially Saints Row 2 and 3, are still solid and better than the reboot of the franchise they tried recently. So maybe start with those ones before venturing into, you know, the uncharted territory of those reboots that were kind of bad. Okay, we talked about Far Cry 5 when we did our other co-op video years ago, and it was really cool because not too often do we see a narrative-driven first-person shooter game game have some sort of opportunity for cooperative play. But fortunately enough, the Far Cry franchise has shifted into allowing cooperative play in their more recent titles. Far Cry 5, Far Cry New Dawn, and Far Cry 6 all have cooperative play enabled, so you can play online with a buddy and play through these games. Far Cry 6, the newest entry in the franchise, is an action-adventure shooter, and it's actually one of those games that probably end up playing out much better if you play it alongside a friend. While the other games we've talked about so far have been focused mostly on cooperative experiences and how to have players collaborate together, this game is a bit different because it takes that single player narrative as the standard and allows two players to play through something like that in the same session. And that's something we don't get to see too often anymore, and it's still something that is appreciated whenever we get a game that goes that extra mile. So if you're looking for something more in line with a AAA title, this is a great place to look. This kind of is like one of the games that I wouldn't really be too interested in playing by myself, but if I can bring a friend along, you know I'm going to give it a go. Maybe check out the Master Chief Collection, which is now on PC as well as Xbox, of course, and you can play through all of the previous Halo games minus Halo 5 Guardians, which is fine. It's not that fun anyways, but you can team up with one friend on Halo 1 and Halo 2, or if you have a group of friends and the four of you want to play through the campaigns, just jump into Halo 3, ODST, Reach, 4. All of those support four-player co-op, which is a great time. You know, Stardew Valley did such a great job at, like, recapturing, like, a definitive farming simulator experience that also has like these like cozy social simulator features in it as well and we see this game was really popular and kind of took over the harvest moon style of gameplay and more recently it did add a cooperative mode to the game so now this is one of those games you can experience with your friends if you're looking for something more like a looter shooter borderlands has always been a classic go-to all the way from borderlands 1 through all of the games that came out in between borderlands 2 borderlands the pre-sequel and Borderlands 3, which more recently came out. Also, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands released, and it's interesting because this game really takes a lot of, you know, the core mechanics of Borderlands, but just kind of throws us like fantastical comedy elements over to it. I was a little bit hesitant about this idea at first and how the game kind of released, but now that it regularly goes on sale, if you're looking for a slightly different experience, you can grab a good deal. This one might be a good grab. If you're looking for a very narrative-driven, cooperative experience for you and your friend to play, I strongly, and I mean strongly recommend the Dark Pictures Anthology. Right now, there's four games in the series with more to come as season two will release, and usually they release on a yearly basis, though we're in between seasons, so they took a year off. From the outside looking in, you might hear a lot of criticisms about these games, sometimes being a little janky or glitchy or weird, and that's all true. But at the end of the day, there's no other game that offers this type of narrative experience with branching storylines and stakes that are really kind of high. This game is not only just fun for the people actually playing the game, and there are some more options than just two players if you're doing like couch co-op, but it is a really cool game just to watch from a story perspective. Like I said, a little janky, a little rough around the edges sometimes, and some of the story's final acts don't feel maybe as fleshed out as what they could could have done. Like there's usually this big epic finale and then the game's over abruptly. Like there's no like kind of calm down, cool down period to like let you like feel the endings out of the game. But nonetheless, still a really good experience. This is one of those few games that Luke and I come back to every time there's a new release. We sit down, we play it in like two nights and we're like, wow, that was fun. Let's totally play it again a second time and like pick all different options. And then we get like halfway through our second playthrough or we forget to come back for a second playthrough and never talk about it again. House of Ashes though, that one was really good though. 
that one was probably my favorite. If you're looking for something a little more real time and strategic, The Escapists 2 actually isn't that bad. Luke and I spent some time trying to find our way through it and it is deep. There's way more depth to this game than we had ever thought. And because of that, we were maybe a little overwhelmed, but for the time that we were trying to figure out how to break out of prison, we had a pretty good time. Castle Crashers is a classic, but still a goodie. And it's available on a lot of platforms nowadays. You just go into this hack and slash beat em up co-op RPG adventure. It's honestly a good time. It's lighthearted and fun, but I don't think anyone's jumped into Castle Crashers and was like, man, I can't stand playing this game with my friends. There's a lot of really classic co-op games that came out years ago, like Portal 2, which is still known for being the pinnacle of co-op puzzle games all these years later. And it's always fun to jump back and try it out, especially if you're on PC, because you can play workshop maps very easily. And those puzzles can be just as fun and a fresh experience that are more advanced than what the base game offers. The Gears of War franchise is another franchise that has been known for its co-op over the years, especially with the newer games supporting more players for co-op, which is cool. Gears of War 4 and 5 are one of the few games that actually have five player co-op enabled. And then there's a Gears of War 1 remaster that you can play with one other friend online, or you could go check out and play through all the Gears of War games that are available on Game Pass. Okay, you know, Back for Blood kind of gets a bad rap because the game is marketed as a, you know, spiritual successor to Left for dead and it didn't quite live up to those expectations, but the game is on Game Pass. It's usually on sale for a pretty fair price if you don't have Game Pass and you can get like all of the DLC sometimes for just a handful of dollars. And you know what? I've thoroughly enjoyed every time I get in a campaign of Back for Blood. It is still a really fun experience if you just like go in with like normal expectations. Just don't set them like to the moon like this is Left for Dead 3, but there's actually a decent amount of content available in this game game and the game functions well, it plays well, there's some good challenging parts and once again the fact that this is on Game Pass really does a lot for it because I do think that if you have Game Pass this is one game that you definitely should go and give it a try. Call of Duty is known for having some interesting campaigns with each yearly release, though not too many campaigns are actually co-op. Call of Duty World at War and Call of Duty Black Ops 3 are two games that do support co-op play, which is always cool to see something a little bit different. Or you can just jump in some zombies and have a great time with that. Black Ops 3 seems to be kind of the peak when it comes to how fans have perceived zombie mode with the Zombies Chronicles DLC. So if you're looking for an ultimate zombies experience, that's not a bad place to go. Okay. Okay, if you're gonna sit down and play zombies, or you need an idea for which zombies to play, go ahead and try to play every single zombies game and do the Easter egg from every zombies map. It's a long road. We've been chipping away at it for a while and it's been a whole lot of fun just trying to figure them all out as we go in order. So if you need like an extra challenge for you and your friends to do, you should definitely give this one a go. Okay, hear me out. Tetris Effect surprisingly has a fun co-op mode. I mean, I don't know. We played it for a while and we got like really into it. There's like this long survival thing. There's like a boss type phase. And I mean, I know it's Tetris, but I don't know why this game was just really fun to play with friends. Okay, a few years back, we made a video like this and we talked a little bit about A Way Out, which is a great narrative driven game that follows two characters who are in prison who plan to break out of prison. Now this game is a lot of fun if you're looking for a narrative driven game that also has a little bit of more engaging gameplay tied with it. But this one's cool because it has that online split screen that is always on so you can see what your partner player is doing and what they're experiencing while they can also see what you're experiencing at the same time. But the story itself is really great. And Haze Light Studios, who made that game, have honestly been doubling down on trying to create and curate really great co-op experiences. And more recently, they released their new game, It Takes Two, which is another great example of a cooperative game utilizing that split screen approach. And it works really well. Now in It Takes Two, essentially two parents who are going through a divorce get turned into these little dolls somehow through the power of magic or something. They have to work together to try to find a way to be turned back into humans and break the curse that they're under. The story itself is actually pretty fun all the way through and there's a lot of really subtle humor throughout the game. But this game, unlike A Way Out, focuses a bit more on the type of gameplay and how to give players constantly varying experiences through and through. And while at the core, it's a 3D platformer, you not only have to work with your partner to navigate through the level, 
levels, fight off bosses, and solve puzzles, but also in each main section of the game, new elements are introduced, keeping the game constantly feeling fresh. Like some moments we're just parkouring and jumping our way through, and other moments we're flying an airplane. It's really cool how this game constantly is throwing different experiences out, and that's something we really liked. Now, if you're on PC only, Lethal Company is a great experience with your friends. The game's only 10 bucks, which is a great entry point for the amount of fun and time you can spend here. But essentially, you and three of your friends are in a spaceship. You have to travel planet to planet trying to find scrap metal in these creepy corridor buildings. And not only is it dark and spooky, but they might be lurking with some sort of enemy or monster that may or may not be defeatable. Now the catcher of this game that makes it so popular is the fact that it uses proximity voice chat which is highly recommended. So it's one of those experiences where like it sounds like your friend talking to you is like actually like they're standing in whatever direction they are based on where you are. The further away they get the more distant their voice gets. Get the f inside. I'm not gonna make it. Not me. No, 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 you can make it, you can make it, them. Damn, he's right behind you! Holy Elijah? <laughs> <laughs> and while I wouldn't say this game's like scary or terrifying in like some of the ways that other horror games out there try to be, the stakes of trying to get all of the scrap metal you need to reach the quota so your game doesn't reach the game over, and the fact that when one of your teammates ends up dying, their mic just cuts out, there's no indication that they have died or anything like that that pops up on the screen, so you're just stuck there like calling out to them wondering what happened to them, it can lead to some very wild moments. What about the- we're just leaving them behind? They're dead. They're not dead. They would have started the countdown. One's AFK. We're gonna make them wait for us to just sit here until they never come. No, they would have started the countdown. Dead. Okay, maybe one of the dead. maybe. maybe <laughs> <they're dead. laughs> yeah, dude, I know these people. The social aspects of this game are like a 10 out of 10, I think, and then the gameplay is also pretty good to pair with it. Easily one of the best $10 purchases our group of friends ended up making. I think we put a good like 15 hours in the base version of the game alone, and while there are going to be more updates in the future, the modding community has easily taken this game to the next level, and there are so many really creative and unique mods that just like adds a ton of quality of life fixes, along with some really creative ideas that adds a ton of content to the game. There's new planets, new monsters, more than four player support. Oh, there's a mod. And not only were the mods really easy to install, we feel like after playing them for a bit of time already, we still have a lot of mileage to get out of this game moving forward. There's a reason that this game became a viral hit in 2023, and I think it's because not enough developers make games like this that, that do a great job at blending social gameplay and other types of gameplay together. Though, I have to say this, you're not playing the game right if you're not using the in-game voice chat features. Don't do party chat, just trust me on this one, the game in-game voice chat is the way to play this game. Phasmophobia is another game that kind of went viral a few years ago because it mixes that social nature of like a horror game with friends and kind of blurs these lines and puts them together and creates a pretty unique experience. So maybe if Lethal Company isn't really up your route, check out Phasmophobia and see if that's more your, your style. Now if you're looking for another scary game to play with some friends, Outlast Trials might also be for you. It's a three player co-op game that puts you into these challenge maps where you have like different objectives and you gotta kind of escape. and there's a lot of you know horror elements going on a lot of jump scares a lot of scary moments a lot of like mechanics that you gotta manage in order to beat these challenge maps this setting is also very interesting it's kind of this cold war era mk ultra type vibe that's going on like some of the maps are like nuketown mixed with like horror and stuff and it's pretty cool the game right now is only available on steam i think and it's still in early access also apparently it's coming to playstation 4 playstation 5 xbox one and xbox series x and s in march of this year but i do think it's one of the better co-op horror experiences so it's definitely another one to add to the list if you're into that type of stuff okay and then recently payday 3 actually released but if eh. I, we, we really weren't hooked in with it. We felt like with the release of Payday 3, it felt like there was so much less content than what Payday 2 had towards its like prime after it had been out for a bit. And I still feel like Payday 2 just has substantially more content at this point. Will Payday 3 be better eventually? Probably. 
But Payday 2 right now still just has so much content that you could go and have a lot of fun playing that instead. Okay, let's talk about some Battle Royale games for a second, because there are so many Battle Royales, and honestly, they can be fun to play with your friends. It's a different experience than like a traditional co-op game, but you know what? The moments you make with your friends are definitely uh, moments. I don't know, I was trying to make some like super sentimental speech to kind of tie this together, but let's just move on. Okay, so there's like four main Battle Royale games that have been popular for the last couple of years. We got Fortnite, Apex Legends, Call of Duty Warzone, and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. And while Fortnite's been a staple in this type of video for a while, just because of the accessibility of this game, I mean, it's free to play, it's cross play, so you can play it on all types of different consoles and connect with your friends pretty easily. But now the newer updates that they're doing, where they're really starting to expand Fortnite into more than just a battle royale, and it's starting to turn into more of a platform for games. I mean, they have this new like music festival thing that's essentially rock band, but in Fortnite, and that's actually kind of awesome. And then there's like Lego Fortnite, which is a survival game that's just bam, in the free to play game, free to play. They even took this like rocket race and made it its own thing. And I'm really impressed with Fortnite. And I have a feeling that over the next couple of years, Fortnite's going to start to establish itself more as a platform for games built within the Unreal Engine and less so of just a battle royale. And I think that that's really cool. And I think that there's actually now more content than ever on Fortnite, which, hey, I mean, more things to do with your friends, especially if the battle royale genre isn't necessarily your thing. Apex Legends is another battle royale game that's accessible because it's free to play, it's cross play. It's also surprisingly on Nintendo Switch. Obviously, the big selling point of Apex is that it's like a hero shooter, so you get to pick your character from a roster rather than other Battle Royale games. So you can kind of figure out a team dynamic that can work well based on your playstyle. And while Apex Legends seemingly has kind of dropped in popularity, it still does get regular updates and it has a core fan base playing it still. So it's definitely not the worst option to look at. Now we have Call of Duty Warzone, which was originally called Call of Duty Warzone 2, but then they dropped the Warzone 2, and now it's just Warzone again. Uh, it's pretty much what you would expect. It's Call of Duty, it's a battle royale, you drop in, you do your thing, and yeah. I feel like out of all of the battle royale ones, this one's like the hardest one to be really good at. There's a lot of like fine tuning that goes into like the weapon loadouts and what the meta is for battle royale games. But usually the set locations are really cool. Now I do have to say when they do special Warzone events, those can be a lot of fun to like download and play with your friends. They did a really awesome Halloween event late last year where you're like zombies and you would come back to life and you had to get the vials. And we had a blast playing that. And then Halloween ended, and uh, we tried to stick with Warzone a bit, even through the new release of Modern Warfare 3, and uh, it was fun for a while, and then that was kind of it. Also, while we're on the general topic of Call of Duty, they also introduced like the open world zombies experience. It's not at all what you would expect from a zombies mode in Call of Duty. It's not like the traditional zombies. It's more of this like extraction shooter that has zombies. It can be fun for a bit and sometimes it gets really close to being really fun, but then just barely doesn't make it. <laughs> I definitely would not recommend going out of your way to buy Modern Warfare 3 just for the zombie mode, but if you're already buying Modern Warfare 3 because you just want the newest Call of Duty game, then you can try this out and it's kind of fun. And then PUBG is kind of like the original one. It, uh, it's fun. It's definitely like challenging, but it feels a bit more arcadey than what you would feel from like Call of Duty Warzone. It's got some wild emotes though, I will say that. That is, that is some crazy stuff. Nonetheless, when it comes to like the main Battle Royale games, you kind of have to play them and pick and choose which one fits you the best. I just wouldn't go in with any preconceived notions about what a game is like based on like what you've heard. You really just got to find the one that resonates with you the best and that you have the most fun with and possibly with your group of friends and then just run it, you know? Give your group of friends some random challenge. The one that I've been going for is what I call the ultimate trifecta run. I know it sounds stupid, but it's in a random personal goal of mine to win three battle royale games back to back to back without dying. And I use the term battle royale loosely. Now I've mostly been doing this challenge solo, but you could do a version of this co-op. Right now I've been playing Headbangers, which really only has a solo mode that you can play it with your friends. And then if I win my game of Headbangers, I move on and I play Fall Guys. And then if I win that, which I guess counts as a battle royale, right? It's like a platform royale. Then I make my way to Fortnite, and so far I've made it where I've won 
in Headbangers. I surprisingly won in Fall Guys, and then I make it all the way to Final 2 in Fortnite just to lose it, so I haven't gotten the challenge complete just yet. But hey, this idea of a trifecta run could apply to you and your group of friends. Maybe you do Apex, Call of Duty, and Fortnite, or some other variation of that, and you try to get your three wins. Just some, you know, little challenge like that can go a long way when you're, like, hanging out with friends. I don't know, at this point, am I giving advice on what games to play with your friends or advice on how to hang out with your friends? There are other battle royales you could still give a go on that have player bases. There's Super Animal Royale, which is more of like an old school top down type game. Feels like something you'd play in like addicting games, but instead it's, you know, like a full blown battle royale game. It's fun for an evening. It being free to play really helps, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the longevity of this looks like. It's just something you gotta pick up and play every once in a while. In recent years, the extraction shooter genre kind of has been popping off and there's been lots of games trying to get their foot in the door. And there's a handful that are actually kind of fun with friends. Fun in quotation marks, actually, for some of them. But still. Now the first and most obvious choice is obviously Escape from Tarkov. It is a pioneer of extraction shooters and in my opinion, it's the best game out of any of them. It just has the most depth and the most things to do and a lot of maps and a lot of different mechanics and bosses and like interactions with other players that you can do. I kind of like that the quest system is challenging and if you're doing quests with friends there's like different ways to approach it. Like sometimes I will be with a friend and we're like trying to do a task on a certain map but we're going in at night because we think it's easier but then there's like some night vision demon on the map just hunting us down and we're like what the hell is going on? So there's a lot of interesting moments to make in this game with friends especially but there's also a couple downsides to playing with friends because like if your friend dies or if you die you're obviously out of the game and your friend has to extract all by themselves. Now one thing I've kind of found that helps getting around that is streaming the game to each other on Discord but I mean it's obviously not that fun when you're dead and you're waiting for 10-15 minutes for your friend to finally finish the raid. So that's a little downside but besides that if you play tactically and if you play it as a team it's very fun to go into buildings and you know explore all the different maps and you know do different things with a team and everything. And if you actually do start this with a friend I can warn you right now, there will 100% be a moment where you kill each other. I'm pretty sure it's something that is very impossible to avoid, but it's also something that is part of playing with a friend in this game. But if Tarkov maybe isn't your style or you're not into the, you know, modern military type shooters, there's actually a couple more extraction shooters that have very unique settings. First of all, there is Dark and Darker, which is like this dungeon crawler extraction shooter with like swords and magic and like, you know, medieval enemies and stuff like that, which can lead to like some insane moments where you're running around this dungeon and you know it's just playing it with friends just amplifies all these moments because you're also trying to look out for another person if that makes any sense another one that has a very unique setting is marauders it's kind of set in like a space theme but i think it's supposed to be in the 90s so it's like a futuristic 90s or something and in the game you're actually space pirates you're boarding other people's ships and taking their loot whether it be real people's ships or npc ships you know there's a good mix of pve and pvp in this game actually it's kind of sick just like, you know, latching onto someone's ship and just boarding them and taking out the whole crew. Kind of makes you feel like the Covenant in Halo 2. And then lastly, this one, I do have to say, I hate this game, but I know a lot of people like it and I have friends who dearly enjoy it. And that game is Hunt Showdown. Now Hunt Showdown is set in the 1800s and it's a little more horror style to it and it works a little different than the other extraction shooters. There's basically these monsters that spawn on the map and you're like supposed to take them out and then extract with the item they drop. And obviously everyone on the map is trying to do the same thing. So you'll run into other squads trying to take out these bosses. It's unique and it has like this hero shooter character selection style going Going on which that is a part i kind of like the main reason i dislike it is because of like the shooting mechanics tied to like the way people camp it just isn't for me but there's a ton of people who like it so if the other three didn't interest you then for sure give han showdown maybe a try because it is the most different from the other three one of the newer games to release is the finals it's actually a free-to-play fps shooter which is interesting as it puts players in this like arena where they're competing it has like really destructible environments you can group in squads of three and you go head to head with a total of four squads there's a couple of different game types incorporated into it but it's supposed to be a highly competitive fast paced shooter that uses more of the environment than necessarily just gunplay it's probably beyond my skill level just with how fast paced and highly competitive it is but while i did play it a little bit it was kind of fun i like the fact that it's like doing something different to reinvent the fps shooter styled game with their own interesting concept i guess rainbow six 
6 did get this whole extraction spinoff that's kind of fun for a little bit. It's very, very tactical and very challenging, and that can make replayability a bit daunting long term. But this is one of those games that can be kind of fun for a few nights with the gang. It's just like one of those situations where people are like, what are we playing tonight? And you're like, I don't know, Rainbow Six Extraction? And then you all jump on and you have a good night. But it's maybe not the game you want to play for the rest of your life. Also, of course, there is regular Rainbow Six Siege which you could play with your friends. Though Rainbow Six can get very toxic, and there's a really steep learning curve. But if you're down for something tactical, it can be a really good time with the right team. Definitely not random Q. Oh, well, whatever. Throw yourself a random Q too. I don't know. Rainbow Six Siege is just kind of a toxic relationship to play. It's like a love-hate thing, I don't know. Now, if Tarkov is too hardcore for you and you're not really into the sweaty PvP style of Rainbow Six Siege, but you still want something tactical to play with friends, then Ready or Not is perfect, actually. Basically, you're a SWAT team and you get thrown into all these different scenarios. And the scenarios reach from a lot of different things, some things I cannot mention in this video, I think. So there's definitely some very interesting settings that you don't see too often. And recently, the game left Early Access and the 1.0 launched, so they did a big content update. So right now is probably the best time to hop in the game because you know the game is fully out and this was their vision so they kind of completed that i do have to say the game can be a little slower and you do have to play it tactically not like call of duty if you actually want to properly play the game but i mean running around like call of duty is also fun you know, for a little bit. Besides games like Rainbow Six Siege, if you're trying to scratch that multiplayer competitive itch with your friends, you could always try Overwatch 2. There's been a lot of criticisms with how Overwatch has approached things, but at least Overwatch 2 now has the free to play accessibility so new players can jump on board. And it does have cross play for unranked matches, which is a shame. I do wish that I could play ranked with my friends on PC if I'm playing on console, but this game does get regular content updates and that's always a good thing to see nowadays when there's so many games that come out and then end up getting abandoned. You know, The Division 2 a lot of people thought would be like a Destiny killer. I don't think it ever was. But there is a new Division game coming out soon and I wonder how that game will end up doing and uh, it's supposed to be going the free-to-play route so keep that on your radar. Some people really did like The Division 1 so if you can find that on sale for a few dollars, pick it up and maybe that could be a fun experience but I don't think The Division 2 is really like the definitive way to experience the idea that The Division had. And then Ubisoft also has for honor which is like kind of a niche forgotten game where you like fight with like medieval weaponry but surprisingly despite its smaller player base this game gets regular updates it gets new characters added and all these years later still supported so try this game out it can be incredibly frustrating and there is kind of a very very high skill ceiling but you usually can get a feel for it and maybe this will be one of those games you just get really into and you start learning all the ins and outs of after a while now that halo infinite has been out for a while i don't know i mean you could jump on and have some fun in custom games and they have apparently done some fixes to make some of the netcode issues and matchmaking a little bit better the biggest thing is that campaign finally has co-op added into the game so you can experience the story with up to three other friends and that can be a good night or two really the game's not that long overall every once in a while there's a cool event going on though and some nice gameplay to go with it so if you catch halo infinite at a good time where there's stuff going on you can have a pretty good time for a while i don't think it's like the end all be all best multiplayer experience out there but i mean it's something if you're looking for something new but also kind of old i don't know you know destiny 2 had a really good reputation for a really long time and it just seems like the more recent expansion has kind of hurt that reputation and the player base has kind of been trickling off a little bit but there's still big plans for destiny 2 and a big finale coming up so it might be worth coming back to destiny 2 once that expansion comes out there's still a lot of backlogged content like raids which can be some of the best experiences to do with a group of friends it's not like just some challenge dungeon or whatever raids are really special in destiny you have a group of six players and you have to navigate multiple puzzles and shooting sections that really are challenging but every player usually has their own unique role that they have to contribute in and being able to coordinate and having to talk with your teammates to figure out what you have to do in the raid learn the mechanics and then work together to actually complete a phase is really really fun so raids are like the top-notch content in destiny and i feel like so many people overlook the raids of destiny too and while maybe the newer ones haven't been as good there's still a lot of good ones back there if you haven't experienced a raid yet definitely work on getting a group together and try it out if you don't even know where to start maybe look up getting a sherpa they're all over the place people like to teach other new players how to do the raid so they can experience it the first time and they'll get you
you all like caught up to speed on what you might need and how to do the raid. And you can make new friends in the process. Now, while Destiny's reputation has kind of been, you know, slacking a little bit, other games have kind of come out of the woodwork and tried to like fill that void that Destiny had created. Warframe's been getting a lot of updates recently and a lot of people have been enjoying that type of game. It's not quite a Destiny clone, but it is an interesting experience where you have like the types of progression and quests that you fulfill. In recent years, Dead by Daylight's actually really just continued to blow up in popularity, becoming more and more of a game that a lot of people jump on board and play. Not only is this game expanded to have new characters, but it also now has full crossplay, which is really cool. Essentially, you can either play as one of four survivors or the killer, and the survivors have to navigate the map while avoiding the killer, trying to do certain tasks like startup generators or whatever. So that they can eventually escape before the killer can come around and kill everyone. There's surprisingly a deep amount of mechanics and meta that goes into this, and some high-level players are very impressive with what they know and the ins and outs of the game, but the game's not hard to pick up if you're a new player, and that's really cool too. So get the game together and try this game out and see if you guys can survive. Battlefield's newest entry, Battlefield 2042, launched to kind of a rocky start, but over the course of multiple months and several updates, it seems like the game has kind of cleaned up a bit and there is a decent sized player base back to playing Battlefield again so if you see it at a lower price because this game does drop in price pretty regularly might not be a bad idea to check it out if you're trying to like scratch that Battlefield itch but remember at the same time there are older Battlefield games out there that have player bases still too so you can always jump on and re-experience an older one kind of like the Call of Duty series you don't have to play the new one you can usually go back and play an older one if that one is kind of what you're nostalgic for. Now over the years there has been many many times where I rented a Minecraft server and I played with some friends for a couple of weeks or sometimes even days and you know we kind of built our own houses and you know did some exploring and all that stuff and then it kind of fizzled out which that is something you can always do like you know the Minecraft phase that happens once a year and for some reason in the last year I didn't really feel like doing that so there's some other survival games I turn to to play with my friends and the one I picked up actually very recently is called Sunken Land. The game is centered around the world being flooded and you're kind of exploring these different islands for loot and I do have to say the game itself kind of with like the stuff you craft and like the way it plays kind of feels like rust so the best way I would describe it to someone right now is it's kind of like rust but with like islands and you know pve gameplay obviously because there's no pvp but there's npcs and stuff so there's definitely a lot of stuff you can do in the game right now it is still early access so we'll see what the future holds for this game and what kind of content they add and how long it takes them to add but i think they have a strong base so this one is definitely one to keep an eye on even if you don't pick it up right away now one that i would recommend you pick up right away is the forest i know the sequel came out and i mean the sequel is fun too but it's still kind of unfinished and you know it still needs some updates so once it's updated i'm sure sons of the forest will also be a very good game but the the original forest game is just awesome. At the beginning it's very scary to like camp out in this island and you know have the cannibals kind of stalk you at night and stuff but once you learn all the mechanics and you actually dive into what the game is about like you know the cave splunking and exploring the island it actually has a very unique story that is kind of fun to learn more about and kind of explains the whole island and builds the whole world here and so I think they did a great job in that. Another one that I can actually strongly recommend is Valheim. What is unique about Valheim is that it's like these mythological creatures that you kind of got to summon at your shrines all across the map but there's also things like being able to build a boat and then just sail the ocean and find some other place so Valheim offers a lot of like interesting things in my opinion though the last time I played it we took like this long boat ride I'm telling you we were on this boat for like an hour I felt like and then like we died and we lost all our loot and we're just like god damn and that's the last time I played Valheim so it can be a little frustrating but it's very good still okay Sea of Thieves is a very interesting game because it's very easy to get severely burnt in this game as it is at the end of the day one of those survival online games that are straight up just a free-for-all. However, get the right group of friends together, get someone maybe in that group who actually knows what they're doing and can teach you, and you can have a really, really good time and you can get addicted to the gameplay. Sea of Thieves has so much to offer in the sense of the fact that every time you jump into the game, you have a completely different experience. And sometimes you're gonna have a great run and you're gonna get a bunch of treasure and be victorious. Maybe you'll fight other ships and other players and win and you're also gonna get sunk a lot and lose all of the stuff that you worked for for hours and hours but that experience is 
kind of part of the charm of it. The fact that you're always looking and always worried about losing your stuff is kind of the fun of the game too. Sea of Thieves surprisingly has gotten a lot of support continuously over the years and they have made some pretty cool additions it's a whole lot more story driven than it once was if that's kind of your forte i mean they added all the pirates of the caribbean stuff but then they've continued to support it long after there is still some frustrating mechanics when it comes to pvp mode but now they're introducing this like safer seas thing where for the first like 40 levels of the game you can set up a safe private lobby with just your buddies to kind of get a feel for how sea of thieves works before you fully get wrecked by like these super pros at the game kind of a controversial move because I feel like the environment and dealing with other pirates is a part of the experience, but maybe they know more than I do. They don't. We haven't talked too much about like Nintendo and Nintendo's co-op can be kind of hit or miss, especially on their first party games. Like sometimes a game will release and it has co-op, but the co-op mode's not really co-op. You like will control the hat of Mario and Mario Odyssey. That's not true co-op, but other times there is like fully fledged cooperative play, like in Super Mario Wonder where multiple people can drop in and out and play through the game. Pokemon added co-op, and I don't think Pokemon co-op is worth it yet. You're limited to just like traveling the world and catching Pokemon and not actually like progressing through any story together. I do hope that eventually Pokemon does figure co-op out because it could be really fun. They just need to push it a little bit more. Kirby and the Forgotten Land actually has an interesting premise for the first ever 3D Kirby game. But I feel like the co-op game still kind of did the whole like the second player is not as important type thing. Uh, but it was steps in the right direction. And while not specifically a first party Nintendo game, but something that is on the Switch, Cuphead is an interesting game. It does have co-op mode, which makes an already very hard game maybe just a little bit easier. And it's always fun to experience those types of things with friends. But one really underrated genre when it comes to co-op games definitely is the meme genre because there's a lot of really fun games that can just give you a really funny and hilarious night and those shouldn't be underrated or disregarded either like Roblox you can jump on play some really dumb games and have a good laugh with some friends I know it sounds like a crazy game, but seriously, you can have some very memorable experiences if you have the right friend group. Or if you need something else, you can jump on VR chat. Or if you don't have the VR set up, you can do rec room and just see what happens there. Golf with your friends can lead to some very, very high levels of toxicity, surprisingly. But it's also a pretty solid mini golf game if you're looking for something like that. Or if you're looking for more of a party game experience like Mario Party, but you don't have a Nintendo console, check out Pummel Party on Steam and it's going to be coming to Xbox later on but it gets updates regularly which is really cool but if you want another thing that does tie more heavily into the co-op side of things you might really really enjoy humans fall flat this game is just a really fun platformer puzzle that you can play with your friends the physics are wonky it's hilarious but also very team oriented surprisingly you can play it solo but it's definitely one of those games that's much better with friends also with goofy games like humans fall flat there's games like party animals which is more of like a beat-em-up game in the style of humans fall flat similarly there's gang beasts honestly party animals and gang beasts are almost identical in uh like concept and how they play though i really disliked party animals i'll be honest I wanted to like it, I thought it would be this cool experience, and it just felt like a worse version of Gang Beast. So if you want to play the superior one, Gang Beast is the way to go. It's way more fun, I think. The games don't drag on as long, but they're still challenging. There's like mechanics built underneath them, and you kind of learn with the group as you go along. Okay, now hear me out. We're talking about party games. You can't hate on Fall Guys. I mean... <laughs> It's Fall Guys. It's a goofy platformer, but at the end of the day, it does have this squad mechanic that you can play with up to four people and collect points and try to be the last team standing, which is kind of fun. I don't know. I'm always a fan of platformers, so this game was pretty easy for me to kind of get hooked on. Sometimes I have to do some convincing to get my friends to jump on and play with me, but there is an achievement you can get if you can win three games in a row, which is kind of daunting, but that challenge being up there in difficulty has kind of served as a big motivator for my group of friends to continue to play because we want to get that three wins in a row. We're just not good enough at the game to do it yet. Among Us is another game that like became super popular because of its social aspects and we see this time and time again with those games like VR Chat and Rec Room which we already talked about. They obviously become popular for a reason. I really would love to see this genre just like expanded upon more. Grand Theft Auto 5 still is a great game to jump into if you're looking for some good old heists to run with the buddies or you can play Red Dead Redemption 2 and play poker. 
That's cool. Or you could take it a step further and you could play Four Kings Casino, which is a casino simulation game. It's free to play, though they're gonna try to get you to buy in-game currency. But if you want to just play with the free coins that they give you right away, you can play poker, bingo, you can play the roulette wheel and waste all of your currency that way. It's, it's, it's fun for a little while if you're looking for something just to do one night. You can always just party in the club when you run out of money. That works too, but you'll likely lose all your money in the slots. Okay, real quick, let's talk about kart racing games because these can also be hilariously fun with the right group of people. Now there's Crash Team Racing, which is kind of one of the obvious go-to ones if you're on like a console. If you have a Switch, Mario Kart is kind of like obvious, but if you're looking for something free to play, there is like this kart drift racing game. I'll be honest, I had some like weird glitches happen to me or network latency or something that didn't let me race one time. I had a really bad experience. I never picked up the game again, but if you're on PC, see my recommendation is you get everyone on dolphin use the little networking tool that dolphin has set up and you know play some mario kart double dash through online play with the boys because the gamecube emulator lets you do land play so you can do like a virtual land network and play together which is really cool this also works for other games out there like uh smash bros melee you know if you don't have a switch just uh, some old school melee smash why not the smash genre has gotten a lot bigger over the years there are games like brawl Hala out there and other games that might be coming back like multiverses you might want to keep on your radar if you are looking for something to kind of fill the void of smash bros but maybe you don't have a switch and you can't play smash bros ultimate so periodically over time luke and i have tried to play rocket league i don't know every time we try to get into rocket league it seems like we played for a bit, we have a great time, then we decide to play ranked, and that usually is the end of our Rocket League experience. Honestly, I think we're just not good enough to uh, keep up with the people that actually grind Rocket League. It is very hard. Those darn zoomers. Yeah, honestly, like I feel like Rocket League, it's just too... You have to be pixel perfect. I, I mean, maybe. <sighs> Dude, I feel like casual... Like, you can play up to an extent. So, I guess mileage could vary with Rocket League before we can give a full recommendation. I, I feel like some people can just get really good and have a great time with it. I just personally continuously fall off every time I want to like it. Okay, so Counter-Strike 2 recently came out and Luke is like the resident Counter-Strike player. How do you feel about Counter-Strike 2? Do you feel like it's better, worse? than what you previously could play? Objectively, it's worse, but I mean, it's still Counter-Strike. They haven't changed the formula in 20 years, so it's still pretty good. You know, I still be grinding dust too every day, almost every day. Why Why do you think that it's worse though than what it was before? Because they uh, cut a lot of content that hasn't is back yet. So, like the BR mode is gone, there's maps that are gone, like there's like the server infrastructure that is gone, you know what I mean? Like private servers and stuff can you still surf uh honestly i don't know right now i last time i checked there wasn't any community servers so i don't think so in 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 counter-strike global offensive i'd like 100 plus hours in the game and it was just surfing and i didn't play competitive ranked until that one time i played with you guys we should uh, get back on that counter-strike grind maybe we should play wingman there's a it's a duo ranked game mode oh dude let's play it you can carry me to the highest rank yes for sure dude. luke I, I I have a hard time recommending this game that's next on this list. I know what's next, and I don't recommend it either. <laughs> but uh, I, I see what's coming up, dude. League of Legends. Is it a good game for people to get into with their friends? I mean, sure. Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, some of my... Uh better friends that i talk to often i met on league and you know we still play league every now and then so i mean yes it is good in a way to socialize but um i don't think it's a good game for your mental um actually getting into it will it ruin friendships or probably not probably not though one time one time one guy blocked me when i was like I don't know. I was like 17 because I jungled some weird character. I don't know what that means, but it sounds bad. Is it as like friendship ruining as like a game like Uno could be? Now, Uno could be a recommendation on here because it is pretty cheap on like Xbox. But um, I don't know. The servers are really bad. Like there's like a bunch of connectivity issues. So we don't really want to recommend it. And it can like ruin friendships very easily. We've come close to that. We used to play Uno on a regular basis and that... We've almost lost friends playing that game. I felt like um, there was also this weird thing. We played like these, I don't know, theme decks or something. And they were really cheesy where you could like cheese a win very easily after you know the rules. Yeah, don't play Uno. Don't play Uno. It's not good. It's, uh, just don't play Uno. Okay, then Grounded's an interesting game. This was like an Xbox game that kind of showed up on Game Pass in like an early access phase. But I think it's gotten a lot of updates since then. It's like a survival game, but you're like tiny in a yard. And there's things that will kill you. Yeah, actually... 
I recorded a part about survival games earlier, and I did not include Crowned because I kind of forgot about it because I kind of didn't think the game was that good for what it was. But I mean, it's more like it's made by uh, Bethesda or like Obsidian. Sorry, it's made by Obsidian, uh, who used to make Fallout, right? So like a bigger studio. And they make this like game that feels like it's an indie project. It does have indie vibes for sure. I think the updates it's been getting though have been kind of substantial. I've heard good things about it, but there's also a reason why not everyone's playing it. But if you have Game Pass and you're on Xbox and you guys are looking for something like easy to jump into, it's probably not the worst experience, but there's a little bit of a learning curve. So you kind of have to be in the mood to play it. Play Valheim. I think it's also on Game Pass. That's a better survival game. Another game on the list, Deep Rock Galactic. That's a game that you and I actually played not too long ago with some friends because we were just looking for something different to play. It was actually not the worst experience. Like I could see like a group of friends getting really into it. We kind of only played it like one night and played for quite a bit and then we we're done after that. There's some replayability there. It's essentially play as like, what, are, what would you call those? Like dwarves? Yeah. You're in outer space and you're mining stuff. Actually, the more I think about it, it's an extraction shooter. Yeah, actually it totally is. Like you're looting, then the enemies come and you have to shoot and fight your way out before time runs out and you have to extract. It totally is like one of the first extraction shooters of our time, kind of. Yeah, and also uh, it's like a horde, like, I mean, kind of like a horde mode, mode thing too. I don't know. The survival stuff gets really intense. And if you like the casual laid back mining feel, you get that for a bit and then it gets really intense. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good time. It's a good game. Yeah, it's a fun little game. Splitgate, another one that we kind of want to put here in the list of the video because it can go either way. Splitgate has a lot of features, a lot of game types, and it is a different spin on like the typical like Halo arena shooter. The only reason we would be hesitant to be recommended is the game itself is kind of like done with updates and further content and the development team is working on a new game. Try it out, have some fun with Splitgate and get a feel for maybe what the new game could look like and get excited about that. But I don't know if like long term it's necessarily like your like the best option for a go to game. Yeah, the rank mode was very fun, though, like the three or three elimination. That was. And, and we are very picky with like the type of competitive shooters we play. I say that, but we play way too much Rainbow Six and Overwatch. I was gonna say, dude, we're about to hop on Siege after this, and I'm like already like it's gonna be miserable. Maybe we're not picky enough. Should give it, give it a try. It's not, it's free. Like I mean, you can just, it's a free game. Just go, go try it. I guess. Then there was two games that were recommended to us by friends that we tried out with our friends. So there's Risk of Rain 2, which is very similar to Gunfire Reborn, and both of these are recommended to us by other friends, and they showed these games to us. They're like roguelike shooters where you like traverse deeper and deeper into the game progression wise and you like pick a character and you unlock new abilities as you go deeper and deeper and you fight different enemies of varying difficulties both of the games actually were really fun i don't know why we never went back to them maybe we just didn't have the group together or something i feel like it's kind of repetitive like maybe relatively quickly it's frustrating when you get really far and you lose everything yeah. that's for sure but i can see how some people have like gotten themselves hooked on the grind because there is like this really good feeling of like making progress and moving forward and like building up and getting better skills and stuff as you go. So both of those games, they're a little bit different in the roguelike, you know, type of thing, but they play really well. Actually, I think a lot of multiplayer games that have been trying to figure out how to do like a single player or like a narrative campaign well, could probably take a lot of inspiration from these types of games. Like you wonder about Overwatch too, right? Like that game was supposed to have a campaign, the campaign got canceled and you wonder what a campaign of Overwatch would even be like. If they would have taken a note from those types of games, I feel like they could have done something really well. Same with um, Halo Infinite. You know, the campaign got really repetitive after a while. They could have done something a little bit different where they have like a style like that, maybe as a firefight or Spartan Ops type thing and just like built off of that. So I think there is something really cool with these gameplay loops that show up in games like this. And I'd like to see more games like that in the future, but definitely give these ones a try. We'll, we'll be curious to see how big this genre ends up becoming one day. Okay, so we were, we were talking back and forth before we started this video about which MMOs we should include uh, for this video because there are MMOs and you can play them with friends. And um, Luke felt like none of them were probably the best fit. Yeah, it's always hard. Like, I mean, yes, you can play MMOs with friends and uh, the end game content when you do raids and stuff. It's very easy to do with friends or dungeons and stuff. But like the questing often is like hard because you're like just going from point A to and point B and then like someone will get lost and... Uh, that someone is Elijah and then I have to like wait for him. 
and uh, you know <laughs> the amount of MMOs I've tried to get into because Luke's played MMOs since he was younger. I never experienced an MMO. The closest thing I played was like Club Penguin and uh, this game called Gaia Online. I don't know if anybody even knows what that is. I think that's pretty pretty famous. Gaia Online. Was that count as an MMO though? There's no like questing in the game it was just a chat room yeah maybe it's like a social hub of more so yeah my experiences were limited lucas tried to get me into world of warcraft uh elder scrolls online we tried fantasy star online 2 we really wanted to get that one to like or that one to be we really wanted that one to be fun but um so much of the game is single player for some reason before you even get to do stuff together then we tried all of the ones that were like on xbox that are like free to play that have like smaller uh, audiences. Yeah, I think like never uh, winter audiences. Stuff like that. Yeah, we tried all of those at some point. There was one that was like sci fi tech future. I don't even remember which one that one. Do you remember that one? No, I don't remember that one. We bought, we bought skins in it and then never played it again. Wait, was that the one that was the beta that we played with them? And it had like the tower? No, that was a different one though. We also tried that one, but no, it wasn't that one. Nonetheless, we really, really have struggled. The closest we've had though. We've had a glimmer of hope when it's come to success in finding a MMO type game that can actually keep me engaged. And it was Final Fantasy 14, right? Yep. I made it past the tutorial and that's big uh, before my attention span runs out. And uh, we played quite a bit. I got to a decent level. I think we were like around level 20. Yeah, we did some dungeons together and that was kind of fun. The only issue for me was like the accessibility of it. Uh, I could only play it on my Steam Deck and the UI is kind of weird and logging in on the Steam Deck and the buttons are really confusing for me, but it's coming to Xbox soon with crossplay. And once that's there, I'm probably gonna be more inclined to just revisit because I place revisit it because I play so much on the Xbox. Uh, so I'm optimistic about that. Uh, do you remember the name of our server that we play on? I do not. All right, we'll find our server somehow guys and get on Final Fantasy 14. And one day when we get back online, play with us. Transfer me all your money. Yeah. Or your guilt. I wish I remembered the name. All I can say is it's one of the old legacy servers from like way back in the day. There was like at, at that one um, place, there was like a guy in a yellow suit always standing there. In some like foresty town that you can start out in, there's a guy in a yellow suit. He's some player and he just stands there. Every day we played that week. We don't know if he's still there. Find the yellow guy. You find us. Maybe. Man, I'm excited to get back into that. No, it's a good game. Honestly, uh, I think it's the second best MMO I've ever played after World of Warcraft, so... I really don't think about it often, but now that we're talking about it, it was a good time. Like, I'm ready to go back. I might even just play it on the Steam Deck again. I don't care. Oh, that's another thing. It's free to level 60 or 70. They increased it recently. So, um, I think the first DLC or first two DLCs are free, too. There you go. Easy entry level. Okay, and then... Did you want to talk about any of the other MMOs? I put like what games you shouldn't play with friends. And I have on in my notes, Fantasy Star Online 2 and Elder Scrolls Online. Dude, Elder Scrolls Online, I think has maybe potential. I just, I, I just don't want to play an MMO on Xbox because I feel like it's just not it. But if they ever had crossplay. I feel like that's a big thing. I feel like crossplay stops a lot of things. It is crazy that they don't have crossplay on Elder Scrolls Online yet. Because Luke and I are opposites. Like, Luke wants to just play on his PC. I just want to play, like, you know, in my living room on my Xbox. I don't want to have to, like, sit at my desk where I work anyways, right? So, we're like, we need a game that we can kind of play together in that regard if we want to play an MMO together. And then it is weird that Elder Scrolls Online just doesn't have that. <laughs> um, Fantasy Star Online did have it, but then, like, the whole story is, like, tied to the single player narrative that you can't play together and you know what would be crazy now that xbox owns activision blizzard if they put world of warcraft on xbox finally Dude, that's like a rumor i've been hearing since like the 360 days that world of warcraft is coming to the xbox totally real i would i would give it an earnest try if it came out on xbox same with like runescape nah fuck RuneScape. if they put runescape on xbox i'd at least try it just because i think it'd be funny runescape is not for me it's like a boomer game right like kind of it's a zoomer game actually too. Wait, really? I mean, yeah, that's like, I mean, it's just like a cross generational game. But like, it's, you like have to click on the abilities and like, I just don't want to mouse click. I know like Jervalen loves it. Our friend Jervalen loves it. I don't know. I, I, I don't, I feel like I didn't play it when I was young, so I missed out on that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people younger than us that are really into it. 
And I mean, people are actually really into it, and then people Javelin's actually really into it. So, are you calling Javelin old? I'm I'm saying he's older than me, a little bit. Okay, that's why he's on Halo Two, not Halo Three. Well, any other games? Animal Crossing is a good game, though the online functionality is kind of bad. But if you have friends who have the game, it honestly was very fun though when we did play it, and there was a lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, yeah, anything from like playing hide and seek to like. You know, trying to figure out who stole some items, and uh, you know, there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on. It's hard to recommend this game because it's a Switch game that's sixty dollars, so like the accessibility of jumping into the game is a lot harder. But if you have friends who have the game, and then you have to pay for Nintendo Online, right? And then you have to deal with the Dodo codes. Yeah, the Dodo code that 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 is really a bad thing. Any other games you can think of? What about um? GeoGuessr. Dude, GeoGuessr with friends. If you're screen sharing, you get one person in there. You do the battle royale mode, and then you all try to guess. We've had some great experiences, actually. We got smurfed on by uh, the Peter guy. Uh, Peter GeoGuessr. GeoPeter. Uh, GeoPeter, GeoPeter. They were like, this guy has to be hacking. And then we look up his YouTube channel. I've been using this book to keep my entire dresser from not falling over. And I just pulled it out to show. But I took notes on all of the locations that we learned about on GeoGuessr. So that when we were playing... I quickly had like ideas of like what type of camera was used for different countries, whether it was a Gen 1 camera or a Gen 2 camera, what type of bollards there were on the sides, what type of car the Google Maps car would be based on the color and what countries correlate to each color. Like if it was a white car, it could be like Peru or Bolivia or Chile. Um, but if it was like a red car, you might be in Ukraine. Or if there was like no antenna, you could be in like North Macedonia. So I took just a ton of notes when we played this game and I kept the notes, like all <laughs> my crosswalk signs and all that. I don't know if this is right, but I remember the back of the stop signs in Brazil was black, I think. And was that's it? how you knew you were in Brazil or something. I don't even oh, remember. I think I remember history. something like that too. There was a country that had, yeah, in South America that had like the back of the signs a different color. Now that game was fun, man. We should do that again. Man, we're nerds. We're cultured. That's what I would call it. Right, we're cultured. That's, that's how to put it. Cool. Well, I feel good about this list. I think this is a good update from the last time we did a video like this, which we did, it was like a 20 minute long 50 games. And now we've expanded it to over, well over 100. And uh, we have this nice little like podcast section where we can talk about some other stuff. And I feel good overall. I think we did a good list. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below. Make sure you subscribe and notifications on if you're watching on TV. I know it takes like two more seconds. You got to pick up the controller or the remote, but we do appreciate it. And it'll help our videos get recommended to you more and that type of stuff. And then also, if we missed any games, leave it in the comments down below. Huge shout out to our patrons for making this content, this channel possible. Uh, those are, you know, the, the people who put their money into this channel to help us make this type of content. So you have a couple dollars burning a hole in your pocket. Maybe you could uh, check out our Patreon and throw a few bucks our way and uh, you'll get your name in the credits just like uh, these people who have. So uh, otherwise, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time with a new video. Bye.